speak about it because I'm always looking, how can I make it even simpler? And, and I mean, basically that work talks about the power of the mind and the power of thought um, to create our physical world and material world. And then the greater secret takes that to a whole new level, mm -hmm. actually. And so then you really get to see that, oh, my gosh, it's super easy to create anything I want, like really so easy because if we have a belief it's hard, then it's going to be hard, you know. And so, and so it has everything to do with our mind and what we believe. Mm. And so if we believe a thought, it will manifest. End of story. Manifest. So if we believe we are deserving of great love, then yeah. we will manifest it. If we believe we, we totally. are going to be poor, we're going to stay poor. If we believe Absolutely. we don't deserve something, then mm -hmm. it's not going to come to yeah. us. And, you know, it's interesting because because uh, for all of us, you know, and uh, uh, we've been conditioned, you know. I mean, you were very fortunate because you, you had a, a childhood where you were – mind was opened and you were opened and your heart was opened. And that's the biggest, biggest thing is to open yourself to the possibility that everything isn't the way it appears to be. And so even if you can just open yourself to that possibility, just for a moment, you can pick up it all the next day. You can take it all with you the next day that it's all real and everything that you're seeing. But if you just for a moment open to the possibility that things might not be the way that you think they are, then you have the greatest opportunity to really discover something incredible, how incredible you are. So, so with the secret, yeah, I describe it really. And so I really simplify it and the law of attraction because I would say to anybody, if you would just think about what you want, that's all you'd ever get in your life. Ooh, it's as simple as that. But a lot right? of people, yeah. <laughs> but a lot of people think a lot of negative things consistently. It's on a loop that just holds yeah. them into this negative pattern. So mm -hmm. how do we break that negative thought pattern? Right. So so you I mean the mind is like a computer program. So and and the fact that it's on a negative loop is because we programmed it on a negative loop. But but you know, we could have been influenced when we were children and things like that. So um, so one of the things that the mind loves is loves repetition. I mean, loves it. You know, if you really watch your thoughts, this is the same old thoughts over and over again, you know, it's just kind of dishing up the same old thing. So it loves repetition. So the way you can override a program is to put in the opposite, you know, and when you start out, you know, you feel like you're lying, you know, you'll say something like, you know, you might be really broke. Gee, I was when I was making the secret. So um, you, you might not have any money and you're trying to instill, you know, wealth and prosperity and riches. And every time you say it, you feel a contraction in your body because you know you don't have it. But, you know, truly, because I did it myself, after a while you change it, you, re you really begin to change it. And you don't quite have that contraction anymore. And then you start to see money coming in, you know, in, in different ways. Um, and, and, it, and, and or you can be given things that you were going to buy and now you don't have to buy it or so you begin to see you start to see signs of land you know is one of the great one of the great new thought thought um writers would say talk about a sign of land so you start to see sign of land now that's what i did in the secret you can do gratitude that will turn everything around that will make you feel good that will get you off the negative rant but those negative thoughts are coming from beliefs held in the subconscious mind, right? That's where, where do the those, beliefs stem from for most of us? They stem mostly from our childhood conditioning. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Somebody's, our parents said something to us. We just swallowed it, hook, line, and sinker. You know, we're like, right, that's a belief. And, uh, and so we take it in and, and then we have all these beliefs that, that uh, and you can hear, you know, if, you, if you're talking to somebody, like if, if, if somebody says, oh, I believe da, 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 or because we say that all the time, or somebody says, I think da, 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 behind those two, uh, uh, behind those two statements are going to be a belief. Mm. And so the really interesting thing, they're hard to spot because you believe they're true. <laughs> they seem real, right? yeah. They so seem you real. don't think, yeah, you don't think they're a belief. You, you think they're real, you know, and so they can be hard to spot. But if you start to listen to yourself, you know, I believe or I think, or especially look at the things that you have a really strong opinion about. Mm. 
because where you have a really strong opinion is a belief that's underneath that. So, so one of the things that in the latest book is that I show how to um, show how to dissolve those those beliefs and j- just really by some of the things that I've just mentioned. And, uh, and, and you can dissolve them and you just feel free. Every time a belief goes out, you feel completely free. You know, it's an it's amazing, amazing feeling. To, you just feel as light as a feather and actually you feel invincible. Yeah. Because can you imagine, like, if we have, the, the for example, the, uh, the feeling of doubt, right, doubt and uncertainty, now, doubt and uncertainty play a big part in most people's lives and they can be paralyzing those two things. So just imagine living a life, zero doubt, zero uncertainty. I mean, incredible. How do we but get to a place of not doubting ourselves? You can because you need to know who you are. <laughs> you need to know who you are so that you don't doubt yourself because because the one, the one that is doubting is the ego, the one that is doubting is the mind and it's not who we are. So then you've got to become very aware of your thoughts. That one that is doubting, the one, the negative thoughts, they're all coming from the ego, hmm. right, all of them, because who you are would never have a negative thought ever, ever. Who you are would never judge. Who you are doesn't have. Who you are is allowing and accepting. And so you, so all of those things are coming from the ego and they are not who you are. And that voice in your head that you hear, that that voice that's, you know, so familiar to you and seems to know an awful lot about you and sounds like you, that voice is not you. That voice is just a program. Mm. What was the voice that was in your head consistently pre-secret that you had to overcome that belief? Wow. And, then, and, then, <laughs> and then what's been the, the program? Because I feel like every new evolution of us is going to be some type of thing to overcome. So has there been something you've had to overcome in the last 15 years post-secret to get to the next level? Definitely negative thoughts. Before, Definitely. Before the secret, you had a lot of oh, negative before thoughts. The, oh, heaps. I was like everybody. I was <laughs> like everybody. I was just like, oh, I was pointing out all the things that were wrong. And somehow I was kind of brought up, and I think a lot of us are, that you're a good person if you, if you point out the things that are wrong, you know. You have to speak up and say that's wrong. You know that shouldn't be happening. And and uh, and so I, I was kind of brought up with that too. And so that's brought up with judgment, and that does not help us at all. Judgment, we need to put it in the trash <laughs> yeah. because that does that does not belong with us. And the one who is judging is the ego. That's it's the ego. It's judging. The one that has negative thoughts is the ego. So. So I had all of that going on. You know, I had doubt, I had uncertainty, I had feelings of unworthiness, I had ang- heaps of stress. Oh my God, <laughs> heaps of stress. I was this like, pre living- pre the book, pre secret, yeah. yeah, living on the edge. You know, I was like this with life, like white knuckles. You know, <laughs> what's going to happen next? You know, something bad's going to happen, and being really afraid. It's you know, something's going to happen to somebody I love or Mm. so, I mean, I live my life like that. And, and I think everybody does and, and they just kind of keep it all squashed down, you know, and, but most people live their life that way. And I mean, you know, in the last year, if you've been terrified, you know, in the last year and really fearful in the last year, you know, all of that fear has been given to you as this lovely gift you know, <laughs> when you were maybe a child, and it's like here's a whole lot of things to be fearful about, and uh, and then we go through fear. And I mean, it's very easy to see that there's no pandemic that is fear, a fear based pandemic. Mm. Why do we know that? Because there are many people who are not afraid. Mm. And so, if the pandemic was, you know, in the world was actually a, a real fear um, manifestation then every single person on the planet would be fearful. And while there are a lot of people fearful, there are still a lot who are not. Yeah. So that just shows you that the fear was already here with us, you know, right. before the pandemic came along. Right. Yeah. What was the what was the belief that you still had to overcome post-secret? Because you, had, you overcame a lot to be able to create something like that. There was this incredible yeah. movement 
But then were there I, other negative beliefs that still held you back? Oh, yeah. The biggest one, the biggest one was that I was abundant. That was the biggest one. That was your because, lim- a limiting belief? Or, yeah, uh, be- that, that was the one I, I had been brought up with. We can't afford it. We don't uh-huh. have enough, you know, and money would come into my hands. It would slip through my fingers. You know, things would break down. The universe would do all these things to get the money out of my hands. <laughs> it was just like... <laughs> Take, Take it, it away. Yeah. yeah, because I had this belief that I did not have an abundant amount of money and uh, that I was always in struggle. And that came from my parents, bless them, you know, they're beautiful. Mm-hmm. Um, but that, that came from them, you know, we can't afford it and all of those things. So I was brought up with that as many of us are. So the the one, one that I had the biggest thing to overcome, the belief, the biggest thing to overcome was the belief in lack of money. And, and I knew I needed to overcome that for the secret to sweep the world. To be able to attract and bring you. Yeah, yeah. because if I didn't overcome that, how could it possibly? Why would money come to you then? Exactly. Yeah. So I had to overcome it. How did, you, worked, over, how did you overcome oh, that? I mean, oh, how do you yeah, overcome no. the, the fear I, of lack, of the not having yeah. enough? Never, I'm not worthy of money. How do we finally transition into abundance? Mm. I did that by many, many things. I tried many things, uh, all kinds of, I was experimenting with it. So, I mean, I would just walk down the street and say, there's prosperity. Everyone breathing in prosperity. I'd do all these um, affirmations. You know, I'm breathing in prosperity with every breath I take. I am, my substance is prosperity. I am abundant. I am worthy, you know. And so I would say all these affirmations, I would have them all pinned up, around the apartment that I was staying in and so that I would see them and read them every day. So that was just one thing I did. Mm -hmm. Then what I would do, the biggest thing was because at the time I was in incredible debt. I was making the secret and I just didn't have the money to make it. Wow. And I started out $2 million in debt, mind you, because of a whole lot of shows that went really wrong. And so you were producing TV shows at the time. Yeah, I was. And so, I mean, $2 million in debt makes it sound like I had a lot of money. I never had anything like that money. But these particular movies that we're making, they ran over budget. And so I started with $2 million in debt. I remember I discovered the secret and I went to my accountant and I said, you have to do whatever it takes to keep my company afloat. I'm going to make something that's going to change the world. I'm going to make it. You keep my company going. And so, and, and wow. he, you know, and he just said, he just said, okay. And, uh, and so I took out, oh my gosh, I maxed every credit card I had to the limit. I, I mortgaged my home to the absolute limit. I took overdrafts out on my company so I could make, the documentary. <laughs> wow. And and so I had crushing debt coming in on me and I needed more money to keep making it. So it was a journey of absolute luck, you know, and, and the luck was just an expression of what I'd been brought up with. So I had to turn that around. So one of the things I did, like the um, when I would go and get, you used to get, then you would get your bills or accounts in the mail, you know, it wasn't all online. And so oh, I go to the map, you know, and straight away wow. my stomach, my stomach would like. Oh, and if man. anybody's been in that situation where you just don't have enough money and you've got all these bills, it's a horrible feeling, you know. And my my whole body would contract, and I would know that is attracting a lack of money, <laughs> and that's not attracting abundance. So I used to do this thing whereby. I would do gratitude and and I would listen to music and I would do all of as many things as I could until I felt really, really good. And I would just say to myself, I am abundant and nothing would object. No thought would object. And I'm like, right, now's the time to open the mail, right? Well, I'm feeling really, really good. And so then I would open the, the, the bills and I would look at each one as though it was a check. I would imagine it's a check, wow. not a bill. So you played and a game in your mind and you're like, I put okay, a game here's, in my mind. here's a yeah. hundred thousand dollar check. And, so, and I would go, wow, look at all the checks I got today. And so I would do that, you know, and then I'd open them up and I'd be like, wow, a hundred sixty dollar check and, you know, a two thousand three hundred dollar check. And then I felt like it wasn't, 
I, want, I would add them all up and that's how much I received a day. And then I would think, you know what? I need to be receiving more money than that. So I would add zeros to the, to the bills and I would pre- pretend that they were, instead of $160, a $16,000 check that was coming to me. And so I would add it all up and I received all this money. So that was one of the other games that I played. Um, and then I did something quite radical. I, it was an experiment and test and all of these things I did so that I could tell what worked and what would work for people. And and so I thought, what's the way that I can feel really good about money? Because when you don't have enough, it's really hard to feel good about really money. Really hard. Right? Yeah. Really hard. And so I thought, what's the one way that I can feel good about money? Okay, the way that I can feel good about money is if I give some away. Mm. And so what I well, did well, what was, about if you have no money to give away? I, didn't, I took it out. <laughs> took it. I took it out on my credit card. Wow. I took. I took out these twenty dollar bills on my on my credit card. I think I could access a hundred dollars or something. So I took out all of these twenty dollar bills, and I thought, right, I'm going to walk down the street, and I said to the universe, "Show me who to give it to." And so I would walk down the street and I was looking at everybody's faces. And I don't know if you've ever done that in your life is just so silently walk down a street and look at people's faces like with a heart wide open. And I was just melting looking at all these people's faces. And, and, and then it was just amazing because the universe would just show me who to give it to. Like these kids walked out of a store and they're like counting their money. Oh, I don't have enough to get that, you know, they're wanting to get something in the store. And so just, you know, gave them $20 and, that, and they're like, thanks, lady, and ran and ran back in the store to get, you know, the ice creams or whatever they wanted. And uh, um, it was an ice cream store I think they were out the front of. And so... So, yeah, I just went down the street giving away this money and, uh, and in fact, there were two, I think there was two or one $20 note that they, they, it just, like, stopped. It wasn't clear anymore who to give it to and so I just stopped. Do you know that that was on a Friday and on the Monday I received $25,000 in my account from a place that I never, ever, ever could have expected? Wow. Yeah. It's so powerful. Right? It's crazy. Isn't it something? Was there any of the other tests or games that you tried to, you know, change your thoughts and play with your mind to start seeing yourself as abundant and in progress? Yeah, I did. I did lists of all of the things that I was going to, <laughs> all the things I was going to buy, you know, when the money came in. Huh. Um, so I did all of these lists and I imagined that I had those things already. Um and yeah, and I wanted, I remember it was like, I want a house on the ocean. I really went all out, you know, that was just some list. Um, one of the things I remember is that I'd always wanted a Range Rover all of my life. And that was just beyond anything I could afford. And uh, especially in Australia, like they were crazy prices. So, but still I put it on the list and I put all these things on the list. But, you know, interestingly enough, like I did that because that was a way to turn money around. But when The Secret got released, I didn't care about any of it because, Mm. and I didn't even care, all that mattered was that I had got it out into the world and now it was in the world, it could never be taken away. And that is what mattered to me more than anything is that that was going to get into people's hands. And so, um, but still, I have to tell you, got all the things on the list, (laughs) you know, there's amazing views out here of the ocean, um, I ended up by getting a Range Rover. Um, and so, yeah, but I did I did a lot of practices and I have shared those practices in a lot of the books. And also we created an app, which was The Secret to Money. And so there are a lot of the practices in that I put in that app. And I was just dedicated. Wow. Because I knew this was a big thing for people and, and that if I can do it, anyone can do it. Yeah. And you've just... All you have to do is you keep doing it until you do not feel any more lack anymore, until there are no more thoughts coming up saying, oh, no, you're broke, you know. Or thoughts where you're even looking at the money going out with like a contraction, you know. Something else I did, I imagined that with those um, bills that I would open, 
I imagined that I was giving those people money and helping their families and helping. So I would imagine that as well. That was something else I did that that I am, um, that when I paid a bill, I would really sit down and I would think about all of the people that worked in that company and all of their families. I would feel the feelings of all of that. Then I would think about all of this, all of the industries that service that company that mm-hmm. I was paying the money to and that all of the money that I'm paying affects all of those people and helps their family and helps them get food. And so that was sort of another way that I felt really good about money. If you're looking for more greatness in your life, make sure to check out this video right here. And also check out our free PDF, The Three Secrets to Unlock the Power of Your Mind to Help You Change Your Life. Download it right here. Once energy makes it here, you're going to get some really good ideas. You're gonna see things you never thought of seeing. You're gonna feel things you never thought you'd feel. 